Welcome to Carrollton Presbyterian Church in our morning worship on this Transfiguration Sunday. We're glad to have you with us. There are several announcements this week. The big one is we're about to enter the season of Lent. We'll be having a Zoom worship service on Ash Wednesday, and you will be receiving more information about that service quickly. Also, we will be having a Shrove Tuesday pancake supper virtually, and you'll hear more about that from our fellowship committee. Now let us worship God. Let us call ourselves to worship. You are with us, God of sunrises. You awaken us with each bright new day overflowing with promise. You are with us, inviting God, calling us to respond to all those chances to share the spirit of grace and hope. You are with us, glory of God, gathering us into the presence of your peace, listening to the deep sigh of our hearts.
Jesus, take us to the mountain where with Peter, James, and John we are dazzled by your glory, light as blinding as the sun. There, prepare us for the night by the vision. What do you want us to see there that your close companions saw? Your divinity revealed there fills us with the self-same all. Clothed in flesh like ours you go, match to me. We can become so burned out by our hectic days that we lose sight of the one who gives us life. We can become so impatient waiting for God to astound us with wonders when we have the simple pleasures of each day. In these quiet moments, away from all those things which distract us, let us bring our brokenness to the one who listens to our hearts and heals our souls. Join me as we pray, saying, the radiance of your grace is poured out in every moment. Shaper of mountaintops, we dull its luster by living in the shadows. We indulge in fantasy games and watch shows which claim to be real, but we have trouble simply sitting in your presence, in your healing silence. We can become so infatuated with your love for us, we overlook those who hunger for acceptance and hope. Revealer of mystery, forgive us. In silence, may we hear your whispers of grace. In mercy, may we feel your forgiveness lifting the burden of guilt from us. In trust, may we go forth to serve your world, filling it with the light and love of the one who is the light of the world, Jesus Christ. Amen. The promise is true. God's light has come into the world and into our lives. We are graced with glimpses of God's glory, even as we are filled with mercy and forgiveness. Here we find the peace and quiet we need. Here we are set free from all that keeps us from serving. Here we are given mercy and hope. Here we give thanks to our God. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as we hear your word written and revealed, may you challenge us, sustain us, encourage us, and equip us for this journey of faith called life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the second book of Kings, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. And Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. 
Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they were both standing by the Jordan. And Elijah shook his man took his mantle, and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry land. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please, let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted to you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We shall walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We shall walk through the valley in peace. And if Jesus himself shall be our leader. We shall walk through the valley There will be no sorrow second scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, the ninth chapter, beginning with verse 2. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. 
Suddenly they looked around and saw no one with them anymore except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is Transfiguration Sunday. It's the last Sunday in our electionary calendar of Epiphany before we begin the season of Lent. Transfiguration, Transfiguration Sunday. For many pastors, it's the time to call in a substitute, or if you're on a staff, have the associate pastor preach. I don't know why that is, because every time I read these passages of Scripture, something new is revealed to me, and this year is no exception. Transfiguration. What does it mean to be transfigured? Think about how a caterpillar transforms into a beautiful butterfly. That is a form of transfiguration. The Greek term for transfiguration is metamorphosis. Metamorphosis, change. There was a change that was experienced on that mountaintop. It was a temporary change, granted but it was a change or a transformation for the disciples, Peter, James, and John. The Lord took them up onto the mountain, brought them for a time of prayer and meeting. In Mark's gospel, this is shortly before Jesus would enter Jerusalem and face the authorities, be tortured, beaten, and executed. And so he wanted to take this moment to be with his inner circle. And as they were talking, something magical, supernatural happened. Jesus was dazzling white his clothing. Gone was the dusty and dirty clothing that you know, when you're walking the roads in Israel in those days you kicked up a lot of dust and so they were dirty and dusty. But he was transformed right before their very eyes. And something even more mysterious happened it wasn't just Jesus alone. Jesus was with Moses and Elijah. Same Elijah that we've read about in our first reading. Elijah wasn't there simply because he was transported into heaven on chariots of by a chariot of fire with fiery horses. That might have been part of the reason, but really, Elijah was there representing the prophets. How often had Jesus been called a prophet? He himself said, a prophet is without honor in his own home his own country. He called himself a prophet. Moses, the receiver of the law from God, the covenant between God and God's people. Moses was on his other side. Jesus as a rabbi would of course been well versed in the law. But Jesus, as a slightly radical rabbi, actually transformed, transfigured the law. 
He turned it from a series of rules and regulations of which only the scribes and the Pharisees could possibly keep the letter of. He transformed it back into what it originally was, a covenant relationship, a relationship based on love, a covenant where the people are called to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. They were both there to show Peter, James, and John that Jesus was indeed the law giver and the prophet. So, as a result of that and another, another instance, instance immediately after, a cloud descends. Nobody can see anything. But out of that cloud comes a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Of course, who was that directed toward? It wasn't directed toward Moses or Elijah. Or... It was directed toward the disciples, but I also believe directed toward Jesus. The disciples needed to hear it over and over and over again. That Jesus was more than just an ordinary prophet. Jesus was more than just an ordinary rabbi. Jesus was the beloved. And God said, listen to him. In addition, I think, and I've come to think, believe over the years, that this was also a gift to Jesus. A reminder. He had been slogging through the ministry for the last three years. He'd had highs, he'd had lows. He'd had times when he was listened to, he'd had times when he was run out of town. And even a time when he had to disappear from the crowd before they threw him over a cliff. It wasn't an easy ministry. And so, as a reaffirmation of the call that he heard at baptism, God was reminding Jesus once again, especially before he faced the last week of his life, You are my son, the beloved. And I've told your disciples, listen to you. But first and foremost, you are my son, my beloved. What a gift to give Jesus before he made that fateful trip into Jerusalem. But what does this say to us today? We know the rest of the story. We know how it's going to end. And yet this passage still calls out to us. It speaks to us of transformation. We're in the middle of a period of transformation in our nation, in our community, in our church. One of the things that's being discussed in the class that I'm taking this week is how we face and walk with each other through these unusual times. How can the Spirit transform what we are experiencing through COVID, through distancing, through virtual church? How can God transform us and our sense of community in the midst of that. We're not going to go back to the way it used to be. In fact, you really can't ever go back to the way it used to be or to the good old days. 
because they're in the past. Right now we are in the present and we're looking hopefully towards the future, but right now we are in the present moment. And in this present moment, we are Carrollton Presbyterian Church, the body of Christ in this place. Yeah, the building may be shut down, but by golly, we are alive. The church is alive and present. Your session, the elders, and others in leadership positions and from the membership are taking that challenge seriously, looking for new ways to be the body of Christ. When the doors of a physical building are shut, it doesn't mean ministry stops. We're reaching out to develop partnerships with the hospital in town, reaching out to figure out how we can retool the partnership that we have with the school district when in the backpack ministry under these different circumstances. We looked for a new way to enjoy fellowship we enjoyed the Advent brunch. We weren't in our homes, or we weren't in the church, we were in our homes. We shared a meal together. In fact, a meal was prepared and distributed. Thinking outside of the box, we were still the community of faith. We were still the body of Christ. So these are indeed challenging times. There are times when we're tempted to retreat within, to shut out the outside. We also live in times of increasing division, polarization. The us versus them mentality. And it is hurting our community. It is hurting our church. It's hurting each of us individually. Most of all, it hurts God. God feels and carries that pain in God's heart. So what do we do? We continue to transform. I had a teacher once say that the minute you stop learning and growing, you're dead. Whether that's literally or figuratively, because a mind that keeps learning grows. And in that growth, we see new opportunities and new potential. Even in the midst of some of my classes in seminary, I'm seeing that opportunity. I'm learning new things. I'm revisiting some old concepts, but with a new light. And it is a transformative action for me. The current class I'm in, we're talking about interfaith relationships, interfaith theologies, and how we can come together in discussion with a purpose and to serve together despite our diversity, but because of it serving together the greater need of humankind. After all, we are created in the image of Christ, or in the image of God. So, we are about to enter Lent. And in Lent, we have an opportunity, a time to search within spiritually, 
not to give up something, not to take on something new, but a time to reflect and to deepen our relationship with God through Christ. And in that, grow as a believer and as a member of the body of Christ. It will help us, I pray, to transform our understanding of who the other is. So instead of us and them, we see sister, brother. Thomas Merton wrote of a, an epiphany that he had in the late 50s, mid 50s. But he didn't write about it until 10 years later. It took him that long to process what had happened on the corner of 4th and Walnut in downtown Louisville, Kentucky. He was there for a doctor's appointment. He was on that street corner, which today is still incredibly busy. And he writes the following. In Louisville, at the corner of 4th and Walnut, at the center of the shopping district, I was suddenly overwhelmed with the realization that I loved all these people. They were mine and I theirs, that we could not be alien to one another even though we were total strangers. There was no way of telling people that they are all walking around shining like the sun. I suddenly saw the secret beauty of their hearts, the depth of their hearts where neither sin nor desire nor self-knowledge can reach, the core of their reality, the person that each one is in God's eyes. If only they could all see themselves as they really are. If only we could see each other in that way all the time, there would be no more war, no more hatred, no more cruelty, no more greed. I want you to hear that again. If we could only see each other that way all the time, there would be no more war, no more hatred, no more cruelty, no more greed. And you know why? Because there would be no us versus them. It would be we, all of us, together in Christ's service. That's my prayer for Carrollton Presbyterian Church. That's my prayer for our community, our state, our nation, our world that we can see each other as sister, as brother, as the collective we. That's our challenge, but I also believe that's our purpose, as we love God and love one another. Amen. Please join me as we affirm our faith together in the words of the PCUSA Brief Statement of Faith. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. Please join me in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Mighty and merciful one, you have come to us in glory. Now we come to you in prayer saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your glorious creation. Stamp out fires of destruction. Drive away clouds of pollution and restore the beauty of this world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for the body of Christ. Open our hearts in faith. Enlighten our minds with knowledge. 
and strengthen us to proclaim the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of all nations. Show the nations your vision of justice. Offer the leaders your mantle of wisdom and give, thank, give the people your blessing of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are perishing. Feed those who are starving. Comfort those who are suffering. And receive the dying into your arms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whom we love. Bless our families, friends, and neighbors. Help them in times of trouble and be near when they are afraid. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, make us ready for the day when this world is transfigured, transformed, made new, when all things will shine like the dazzling light of your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God's love is revealed in those who seek to be faithful in sharing their gifts, so the hungry might be fed, so the lonely might be comforted, so the forgotten will be remembered, so our sisters and brothers might know God's grace and love in their lives. Amen. As we go forth from this time of worship, where we've had an opportunity to be refreshed, renewed, transformed, may we take the love, justice, and mercy of our transforming Lord with us and share it in the week ahead. And now go with this blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. <laughs>